Hello everybody, this is Goofs and Fox coming at you with a new review video here, and today we're going to be taking a look at the uh, McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse Bullseye Batman, which is a uh, figure I picked up today, actually, as of recording, and I, yeah, really wanted to do a different format for this video here, as I've never actually, um, opened a DC Multiverse figure before. There's some I had contemplated getting in the past, but just never did, so I decided to try this Bullseye Batman here, because he did look like a very interesting design. So I thought, hey, you know, why not take the opportunity to uh, try out this style of figure here. And while I never opened a DC Multiverse figure, I have opened a Spawn figure from the McFarlane toy line, that being the uh, Soul Crusher here, which this is a really good figure if you can find this um, character, I do uh, recommend getting him like this. I really do like this figure, but this is really going to be my only comparison when going into this uh, Batman here. So yeah, I am going to be opening it on camera, but first I want to take a look at the uh, figure in the packaging as usual. And yeah, as you can see here, we have a whole clear window uh, that gives you just a full view of the character and everything that comes with him. Uh, I think some of these figures have stands. I don't know if the Batman here does. We'll see when we open the box. But uh, yeah, I do really like the style of box here. Just really gives you a, a good view of the character inside. Uh, we do have the McFarlane Platinum Edition sticker here. Uh, I do want to say this is for exclusive. So I don't know if this is an exclusive for Walmart where I um, got him from. I think this figure is new from the research I've done with it, so I don't know who carries this figure aside from Walmart at the moment. But as you can see at the bottom, we have the DC Multiverse Bullseye Batman. And on the side here, we do have the name again, and what looks like the comic that they come from. On the back here, we do have some nice artwork, which I think part of this, at least this segment with Batman here, is on the included card. Now we do have this side of the box where it looks like you can actually uh, scan this. So maybe they have some type of DC Universe Infinite. So maybe something that keeps track of the uh, figures you purchase. Underneath, just, you know, the warnings, trademarks, all that jazz. And really nothing on top here aside from a uh, part of the window. So, um, yeah, that's everything for the box here. And we also have some... Uh, ages 12 and up and 22 points of articulation. I know it might be a bit hard to see. This box is bigger than anything I'm usually uh, used to reviewing. So, um, yeah, we're going to take them out of the box here and see what exactly it is we are working with. Now, I have heard some mixed opinions on the... McFarlane toy line when it comes to the DC figures and I left my scissors to the side so that's why I'm trying to <laughs> just sort of peel the sticker here but uh, not really the most effective uh, method honestly so uh, and I got another way of doing this but um yeah I have heard mixed things about these figures some of them being good other ones being kind of eh so uh, we'll have to see with the Batman here. I have heard that quality control is also a little bit of an issue. Uh, okay, here we go. Got something right here. Uh, finally found something that I can open the box with that was close by. So you might notice a little bit of shaking on the desk there, which I apologize. I completely left the scissors I was going to use to the side. So uh, here we go. Finally going to open this figure up. Uh, if I know how to open this. Oh, it's also a sticker on the back here. They really want to make sure you are not getting into these figures here, trying to steal them or steal any of their accessories, which uh, I have to give them credit for because that has been quite a problem in some time with some of the more open packaging. But here we go. We finally got him out of the box after that uh, whole ordeal there but there is the plastic holding the figure we are going to lay that down and it looks like the backdrop comes off as well because this holds yep a stand and the card so uh, we'll take a look at the stand and the card first because uh, you are going to have to peel both of these off so 
Um, yeah, probably not keeping this box really anyway, so. Huh? Yeah, this is <laughs> not, not the smoothest of unboxings I've done, but I am. Yep, got the card out. So, there is the card for Bullseye Batman, if I don't just drop it. But, <laughs> there is the card there, and they do give a little bit of uh, information, I guess, on this version of Batman here. So, that's really cool. I do like that they have that as an included feature. And then now just going to take the stand off. The stand was actually very easy to get out, but yep, there's a stand. Pretty basic stand. We'll put both of those to the side for now. And now I'm going to take a look at the Batman figure inside. So let's see if we can get him out. Try to make sure I don't mess up any bits or pieces here. Actually, it looks like he might have some plastic ties on him so yeah I'm going to pause this here for a moment and come back as I am going to need the scissors for this so um yeah do a quick little pause and be right back and we are back uh Batman has been freed from his plastic shackles here really had to solve a whole uh Riddler trophy just to get him out of the box but um yeah definitely some scissors are recommended because I think McFarlane is one of the few uh, that I still see who use the plastic tabs to keep their figures in. But here he is out of the box. And much easier to take out is going to be his accessories since they are just in some tape. So we can just sort of peel these off. And there is a uh, battering there. Very nice looking battering. And then we have a alternate pair of hands. So... Um, yep, that's everything out of the plastic, so we're gonna throw that to the side. Here are some, uh, looks like some, yep, closed punching hands. Always good for a, uh, Batman figure here. But, yep, here he is, the bullseye Batman in, uh, still as close as the pose as I could keep him in the box. And, yeah, so far the figure does feel really nice. Uh, the cape is kind of papery, almost, in feeling, but not like I feel like it's going to rip. And there are also wires, it feels like, in the sides of the cape as well. So I feel like that is going to be really good for trying to keep them in some poses. But yeah, let's see if we can uh, straighten the joints out here. Uh, definitely one of the things I am looking at with this figure is going to be um, the line of quality control, since I have heard that is something that's a bit mixed when it comes to some McFarlane figures, so uh, really trying to make sure I don't see anything breaking or something that maybe should be moving that isn't. But yeah, from what I am seeing here, it does look like we have a pretty nice figure overall. Uh, articulation does feel really nice. Looks like you got some pretty wide ranges of motion. Oh, the hand popped off. Uh, <laughs> well, the hand is supposed to pop off, but I'm uh, not sure if it's supposed to be that easily, but it looks like you do have some joint. Yep, you do have a joint, so just gotta move that joint a little bit, but it seems like other than that, um, yeah, hand is going to stay on if you don't, like, just forcibly pull on it, which I usually do like that the hands seem like they're sturdy enough, but don't necessarily, um, you know pop off immediately because since you do have the alternate hands that is going to be a nice feature for this figure here but yeah overall is looking like a pretty cool batman design here you do have primarily um, white and black for the color scheme with the only exception being some uh, skin color here for the mouth area and then you do have that bullseye on the uh, torso here and it's also on the back of the cape as well. I was not expecting this to be on the back of the cape. I think that's a very nice touch instead of this just being plain. I almost wish this bullseye was actually bigger. Like, it just took, like, more of the cape. So when you just have the full cape out, you just have this large bullseye in it. I think that would have been a very interesting design there. But, um, yeah, it seems overall the figure's articulation is really good. I, had, I don't see any issues in terms of the paint or anything, so it does look like the paint application is really good. 
Uh, one of the things I'm already seeing, though, is that if you try to put the ab back like this, as you can see, uh, this is not painted in here. I wish they kind of maybe put some paint so that it would, you know, maybe look like the so the target is just kind of stretching out instead of just a white spot there. But, um, yeah, aside from that, you know, if you have the chest normally, the torso, then it does seem to stay fairly well. We're going to pull the... Batarang out here because I do assume these hands are capable of holding it. Uh, I probably can put it a few different ways actually, but we are going to try to put it this way first. Just try to see if we can get in there. Unless it's supposed to go this way. I don't know if there's any particular way that the Batarang is supposed to go, but it does look like it holds from uh, this direction here. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, so I think that hand might just be a little bit on the <laughs> looser end there. Uh, the left hand's good. The right one does seem like it wants to pop off a little bit. Let's try the other hand, see if that has any issues. It did take a bit more force with this one, I think, than it did with that one. But uh, while we're on the topic of detachable hands, I guess we can put on the closed fist hands as well. Ooh, those actually feel like they are sturdy they feel like they might have some tightness to them which is really good uh, probably if i start taking them on and off multiple times we'll probably start seeing that decrease over time but we do have some punching hands here so you can have some power wham action uh with batman here and let's see i actually didn't show the legs the articulation there looks like you have a really good bend at the legs you can get some kicking action there uh, actually, looks like you got a nice spread with the legs. Uh, no sort of... Actually, no, looks like you got a little bit of a uh, rotation there at the feet. Do you have some rotations. I should actually turn the whole joint. You can go up and down. You got a little bit of a toe bend. And then you probably, depending on how you put this, you can probably turn this into a ankle pivot because i don't think this has normal ankles pivots so you can kind of cheat that there if you want but i haven't noticed a um yeah i don't see anything in terms of ankles but um yeah it seems like the possibility is pretty nice so can we get him into a convincing crouching pose uh, i gotta put my camera down for this but yeah, you can get some type of crouching pose here. Can also maybe try to get him doing a little bit of a kick. So yeah, you do have a few options when it comes to the articulation there. So um, yeah, so far from what I'm seeing, this is a really nice figure. Okay, yeah, that right, <laughs> that right joint is just... Uh, not really wanting to stay on. I, I think it might just be the peg. I don't know. I don't think it's the arms itself because the other arms stay on just fine. It might just be something with the peg, but really so far, I think that is the only issue I've actually seen with this figure. So we're going to pull out the stand here. I actually missed on the stand. You do have a little, uh, let's see if it focuses. We do have a little, come on, focus. We got a little DC logo here. It is having a very hard time trying to focus on that maybe because the batman is still in the frame there we go a little dc logo there and you do only have one uh peg hole there so we can put batman on the stand here if we want to have him you know maybe up for display or maybe you know maybe maybe it might work for some of the posing as well if you want to get him into a action pose but yeah it does seem like it's a pretty sturdy stand it does stay in there pretty well um that's as much of the uh feet as it covers so um yeah it seems like it's able to be a pretty decent stand so uh really nice i know with some of these stands i've had them before where they don't stay in the foot properly and they are just kind of loose so uh, that is something that i do think is important if you are trying to display your figure with the stand uh but yeah from what i am Seeing here, it looks like the um, Bullseye Batman here is actually a really decent figure. Aside again from the um, peg here just being kind of loose if I try to um, move it there. But um, other than that, yeah, it does seem like a really good figure. So 
Um, yeah, I'm gonna make some adjustments to the camera here because we're gonna do some size comparisons now. So here he is next to a Star Wars Black Series figure, that being the Death Watch Mandalorian. And as you can see, the Mandalorian is a little bit shorter. I think it's just, um, you know, with the difference between McFarlane and Hasbro. I think Hasbro does use a smaller scale when it comes to their figures. But here he is next to a, another white figure, the high-grade Gundam Volout Colors. Uh, here he is next to a Master Grade 1100 scale goof. This is a 1144 scale figure, by the way. Here he is next to a teeny tiny goof. And here he is next to the um, Spawn Soul Crusher. And as you can see, these two figures... Oh, he almost looks like he... I feel like he was about to fall for a moment, uh, but I think his feet are... Uh, pretty stable for the most part, so, uh, yeah, Soul Crusher being a little, there we go, wobbly there. He does come with his own stand, I probably should have pulled it out for this, but, as you can see, these two are in the same scale, so, um, yeah, that's the scaling for all of the figures here, so, um, yeah, again, different format from a video that I'm used to doing. Typically, I would do this in segments, but I wanted this to be, like, a uh, sort of just a live discovery of really everything that I'm seeing here with this figure, and really, yeah, I am liking everything that I'm seeing with the Bullseye Batman. I'm gonna bring the, um, box back up here. And also I'm gonna have the card to the side as well, but, yep, that is the, uh, my review of the McFarlane Toys DC Universe Bullseye Batman. Again, yeah, seems like a fairly decent figure. I don't know if this Batman uses the mold of any other Batman. I'm assuming it might, because this does look like a Batman mold that I have seen on shelves before. But really, it does seem like it has some really nice quality. And it's also a very clean design as well. Like, aside from the um, issue here that... Not really even an issue, it's just the way that the paint is... Uh, really, aside from this, I feel like all of the detail that is on this figure is actually really well done. Uh, the pants that are black, they are well painted. There's no, like, black splotches um, anywhere from, like, either this or from the headpiece. Uh, let me do a zoom in on the head there. And yeah, it looks like all the head detail is well painted on, so... Um, yeah, really no issues when it comes to the general design of this figure. Uh, the only thing that I, uh, any, well, I guess I already said the only thing for, well, the only thing for the paint. The only issue that I really have been having is, for this video, is just this arm is, or this hand. Seems like the peg might be maybe too thin, or there's just something with it where it isn't holding properly. Uh, but other than that... Yeah, this is just a really uh, decent figure here. So yeah, if you are interested in the design of Bullseye Batman here, um, yeah, this is, I think, a pretty good pickup. Uh, I don't know if this design will be for everybody, though, because this is actually my first time seeing this design for Batman. So I don't know if this is a design that would be for everybody. Uh, again, I thought that it was really cool, that's why I decided to pick it up, but... Uh, maybe if you don't like this design, or maybe if, you know, you don't have, like, this mold. I The mold seems pretty good. Yeah, you can tell I don't have a lot of knowledge on this line to really give a clear recommendation whether or not. So, um, for my purposes, for what I think of it, I think it's a pretty neat figure. I think it's worth picking up. Maybe even if it's just, like, a one-time purchase for this type of thing. Because, yeah, I don't know if I'm ever going to get another McFarlane Batman figure. I know there was one a while back, but I think that one has long since been discontinued. So, I uh, really don't think I'm going to be able to find that one. But, for the one that we have here, I do think it is uh, worth getting. You know, maybe if you want to fill out your collection. Or, again, if you just kind of like the general design. I really don't see no negatives with it. So, um, yeah, I think that's everything that I have to say here for this um, you know, unboxing and review of the DC Multiverse Bullseye Batman. 
And yeah, I don't really have too much else to say. So yeah, comment down below what you think about Bullseye, Batman, or you know, maybe if you have any other recommendations for DC multiverse figures as well. I'd be very interested to hear what the uh, maybe current recommendations are for some of these figures. Uh, remember to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. And with that, I will see you all in the next one. Later.